Thank you so much for joining us today, Andrew. Okay. Um, so we know the primary target of the spacecraft is to reach Ganymede, and why is that? So Ganymede is, is really a fascinating moon. It's the largest moon in the solar system, and um, uh, it's, it's got a liquid water ocean underneath its icy crust. But the key thing about it is it's got its own magnetic field, so it's really unique amongst all the moons in the solar system. It's got a magnetic field, so it's a little bit like a miniature Earth out in the outer solar system. How will the JUICE spacecraft test whether this moon and the other moons are habitable? Yes, JUICE is looking at habitability. So, um, so there are four really conditions for habitability or for life to exist on, uh, on anywhere. Um, so one of those things is to have water involved. So we know there's a liquid water ocean, we just don't know how deep it is. Um, we know that um, there are some substances there which are, which are relevant for life, but the chemistry that you need for life includes things like carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus and sulphur. So we don't know if all of those are there yet. Um, also, you need a source of energy. We know there must be energy because that keeps the, um, keeps the ocean of Ganymede liquid. Um, and um, the other thing is that you need enough time for life to develop. So we're investigating all of those and trying to compare between the different moons because as well as Ganymede we'll, uh, going into orbit, we'll be doing flybys of two other moons of Jupiter as well. Okay, so what, what is the mission course? Well, the course of the mission from launch from Earth, um, which is a huge rocket, but it's not enough to actually take it to the Jupiter system because it's laden with fuel as well as the scientific instruments on board. Um, so it goes via Venus, um, via the Earth, for gravitational slingshots to actually give it enough energy to get to Jupiter. So once it's got to Jupiter, it goes into orbit, first of all, around Jupiter. It does some flybys of the moons Callisto and Europa, uh, and then spends a little bit of time actually um, looking at going out of the ecliptic plane to look a little bit at the aurora um, of Jupiter as well um, in the magnetosphere and then finally goes into orbit around Ganymede so this is going to be in 2032 um, when it goes into orbit um, so when it goes into orbit it starts off in an elliptical orbit at Ganymede then it goes into a circular orbit at 500 kilometers then 200 kilometers and then eventually it spirals into Ganymede and, uh, and that's the end of the mission. How long will the spacecraft be in orbit around Ganymede? The spacecraft will be on, in orbit a few months around Ganymede, and so that gives us enough time to build up maps of the surface, um, for the surface features, but also to look underneath the surface with subsurface sounding radar to look at what the ocean is like and look at the char basic characteristics of the ocean. We will also be able to measure composition um, in, in the Ganymede environment, um, so the, the sort of weak atmosphere which it has, as a result of being bombarded by the plasma, the fourth state of matter, beyond solid, liquid and gas, which is which is in the Jupiter system, uh, and the energetic particles there. So the icy surface is being bombarded all the time by Jupiter's version of the Van Allen belts um, and being um, and being hit to produce this atmosphere. So we're going to be, it's, it, the whole thing is a coupled system which we're going to be able to explore. So it's a, the payload is designed to look um, underneath the surface, look at the surface itself, look in the environment, and to see how the um, moon interacts with its environment. Who will be involved in working on this mission? Uh, there's a worldwide international community which is going to be involved. The European Space Agency is leading this, but there will be scientists also from the US involved, um, as well as uh, as well as Russia and um, and other nations. So basically, we've just gone through the phase where we're um, uh, where we've defined the mission, just got it accepted. So the science study team has now been just very recently disbanded. So we're now in a competitive phase of proposing the instruments um, which will actually fly towards. Uh, towards Ganymede in 2032. So it's a very exciting time for you know the older people like me involved in the mission, but also the younger people coming up who are really going to benefit from this. And what would you say is the direct next step from now? The direct next step for me is tomorrow to go to the UK Space Agency to discuss funding with them um, and then to put in the letter of intent for actually doing a proposal for the for the instruments and scientists worldwide will be doing this. So we're over the summer this summer we'll be writing proposals which will hopefully get to lead to the payload being selected in about the end of this year, something like that. So the selection is done um, after the proposals go in. And uh, so that's the next step for the, for the sort of academic and, and research side. Industrially, um, the industrial contracts to actually look at the, um, uh, the mission 
uh, those will be started, competitive industrial contact, uh, contracts will start fairly soon um, to look at how to build this thing because of course it's a big challenge to go to the, the Jupiter system. The radiation environment is severe, um, it's a long way, it's a long mission, it's got to be reliable, it's got to work. So, um, so getting the industrial part right is as important as getting the scientific instruments right. So both of those things will be happening over the summer. Well, that's incredibly exciting. What do you think the significance of this is for space science? Well, it's a highly significant mission. Obviously, uh, the European Space Agency has chosen the mission. It's a billion euro mission, so they think it's really significant. And yes, the significance is that uh, we're able to, to study processes within our sol own solar system, which may well be happening in other, other solar systems with planets around other stars as well. Um, so, and in particular, Ganymede um, was discovered uh, to be maybe an archetype for water worlds which which occur elsewhere. So water worlds were only discovered actually this year um, using telescopes and stuff on on Earth to actually to actually discover those. So we now know those are there. And now we can study one in detail and we can compare the three moons to, to look at the habitability of them. So ultimately is there life out there? Well, what we're looking for with this mission is habitability rather than looking for life. We're looking for the ingredients for life and whether they could exist um, uh, within our own solar system. At the moment, we don't know of any life elsewhere in the universe, but where conditions are right, from a scientist's perspective, there's absolutely no reason why there shouldn't be life. So my hunch is that we might find something really exciting in the Jupiter system. Well, thank you so much for coming in, Andrew, and congratulations on the approval and good luck with the selection process. Thank you very much indeed.